Ciao friends! In this unplugged video, I want to talk about development tools for tabular models. The most famous tools we know is Power BI Desktop, but we also have Visual Studio and Tabular Editor that are editors that allow us to create and shape the tabular model that is the core for any uh, Power BI solution, for example. So I will uh, show you what happens when we create a model in Power BI, what is happening under the cover, and then we will see what happens when we use Visual Studio and when we use Tabular Editor, trying to understand why Tabular Editor can be much more productive uh, compared to Power BI Desktop or Visual Studio, especially when you have a large data model with many table columns and measures. Okay, so let's start and let's go to the demo machine where I have here Power BI Desktop ready to import some data. So I import data from SQL Server here. I get data from a demo database here, and I import a few tables. The model I'm gonna create is not that important. What I want to focus on is what happens when I modify the model so that I will describe what is happening under the cover. So let's get some table here. For example, I have here, let's see, this table, DAX book sales, and the product table could be enough, and maybe the date, but I don't have to load too much data. I click load, and now these three tables are imported into the data model. What is happening is that our query transformation are applied. I'm not transforming anything at the moment. The data is read in memory and is compressed to populate the model that now we have with three tables. At the moment, I still don't have relationships because uh, probably, oh, we have a relationship here and I can connect, for example, the date here to the order date here. But this is not the important part. What I want to focus on now is what happened. Now, I have my data and actually I can see what is going on if I open a few tools. For example, here I have DAX Studio. DAX Studio allows me to see what uh, uh, my model has. You see that I also have auto date time that I kept enabled and I had these hidden tables. But the data that I loaded, you see that we already have more tables than what we can see. The table that have been loaded in memory are somewhere in memory. And when I open, let me open the task manager. The task manager is a good example that, uh, is, sorry, is a good tool to show what is going on here in Power BI Desktop. So let's see, where is Power BI Desktop here? You see that Power BI Desktop has 16 processes active. And one of these processes is analysis services, MicroSQL Server Analysis Services. So the data that we loaded in Power BI Desktop is actually stored into this analysis services service, which is exactly the same process that I am using from DAX Studio. So DAX Studio is actually connected to analysis services. So let me try to start describing in terms of uh, architecture what we are doing. So I go to the whiteboard and let me recap what we are doing. So we started from Power BI, right? We had a Power BI and Power BI we discovered is a set of services. We have the user interface, we have the meshup engine for Power Query, but one important engine we have is analysis services. So let's call this AS, right? Analysis services uh, retrieve data from uh, an external database, in this case, a SQL Server. So let's say this is our SQL Server here. And this data has been transferred in memory into analysis services. But I still have, I still have my editor open. And this means that when I go to Power BI Desktop, I see a structure. So let's draw the structure here, where I have a table, where I have a uh, columns, uh, where I have measures, and so on. So we call this uh, the description of the metadata that we have, right? And this metadata uh, are what we actually call the tabular model. 
when you create a model in Visual Studio or in Tabular Editor, you are creating an object model that is called the, the Tabular model. Um, you will see that this file is called model.beam in many tools, but Power BI is hiding this from us. But actually, this is happening. So when I have Power BI, I have an editor that is uh, manipulating this area, okay, the model, and is moving this information here to analysis services to keep analysis services synchronized with the description of the model I have. Because the description of the model is not necessarily stored in analysis services. It can be described just as a list of table names, uh, measure names, column names, relationships uh, in this format, in this um, tabular model format. It's called also TOM, tabular object model. Now, Power BI is hiding this, but conceptually, we are editing a description like a text file, and this description is kept synchronized with analysis services, which is this element here. This analysis services that is always synchronized with any change we are making is also called workspace database. Now, I will show you that in other tools, this concept of workspace is a separate concept from the model that we deploy. But if you think for a moment, when you are developing locally on your machine with Power BI Desktop, you're using like a local workspace that you will deploy to the server when you publish the model. But at that point, the version of the data that you have on the server will be synchronized with the refresh on the server and so on. So usually we define as a workspace a copy of the model that we use just during the development. Okay, so this is the idea. The workspace is this copy that is always synchronized. Now, why am I explaining you this concept? Because Power BI tried to hide the details of that, but understanding how this works it could be important for several reasons. So now we go back to the demo machine and we open the SQL Server Profiler. If you start from uh, DAX Studio, you have this button that connects uh, DAX Studio to the same workspace, to the same analysis services instance with SQL Server Profiler that you have if you installed SQL Server Management Studio on your machine. If you don't have SQL Server Studio, uh, SQL Server Management Studio installed on your machine, you will not, uh, enable, you don't have the SQL Profiler, so this will not start. I'm doing this because SQL Server Profiler allows me to capture events that describe the communication between analysis services and the client, or in this case, Power BI Desktop. And I want to capture the common events, uh, command end, and I want to see the progress reports like current and end. You will see in a moment why I'm doing this. Okay. So now, if I do something on Power BI Desktop, when I edit something in Power BI Desktop, Power BI Desktop has to synchronize with analysis services. And I will see this happening here in the profiler. If I go back to Power BI Desktop, and I now, now I, copy, I, I move Power BI Desktop here, let's do something uh, in this model. For example, I want to rename, I want to rename this table to date, just a rename of a table. You see that because I renamed the table, this rename operation has, uh, has sent several instructions to analysis services. You see that we have uh, several commands here that basically propagate not just the, the single rename operation, but any operation that is required to synchronize the user interface of Power BI and everything else that is required to keep a consistent view of the data and the model. You can see here, let me remove my face one moment. You can see here the description of the complete syntax sent every time. And, and I did uh, just a small rename now, so I, I didn't spend time doing complex operation. But you see that now if I start to do something a little, I try to be a little bit faster. So I go here and I rename this measure to product. And I rename this measure to sales. 
you notice that every time you see Power BI showing uh, the working on it, the working on it dialog box is simply telling you that it is synchronized with analysis services. And the same happens, so if I go here, the same happens, for example, if I go to a new measure and I go in the editor of the measure, sorry, I, let me do this again, new measure, so sales amount is equal to some x of sales quantity multiply by net price. Okay, just to create a measure. And again, a measure is propagated to analysis services. You see that there are always new commands that are working. Now, I just have three tables and one measure and two relationships. But when your model starts to be big, you will see that every time you create a new measure or change something in an existing measure, there are a number of operations required just to validate and to synchronize the Power BI desktop user interface with the analysis services uh, workspace database that we are using now. Not to mention if I import other data, of course, the, the, the operation are more complex but this is the starting point to understand that every time you edit a model and you do simple operation like renaming a name or changing the form of string of a measure of or, or of a column you see that uh, you have to wait and this waiting time is because uh, you cannot in Paraguay Desto, you cannot say, oh, I want to do two, three, four changes and then apply all of these changes at once. Every single change has to be synchronized and you have to wait until this synchronization is complete. So this is how Power BI works, but we have other tools like Visual Studio and you can use, you can use Visual Studio to create a model and to deploy this model to Power BI Premium. In Power BI Premium, you can enable the XML endpoint in read-write mode or if you have analysis services, you can use Visual Studio and deploy the model to uh, Power BI Premium or to um, your analysis services instance. So let's try to see what happens if I use uh, uh, Visual Studio. Now, when you install Visual Studio and you install the component to manage analysis services projects, you have here, when you create a new project, you can create a project using analysis services. And you have several types of analysis services projects. We just want to create a Tabora project. So when I click Next, uh, I've been asked for, uh, let me just write a demo here for the location and for the no name of the project. And I create the project. The user experience that you will see in a moment is very similar to what we have in uh, Power BI Desktop. Indeed, you can choose whether the workspace that will be used by Visual Studio is the integrated workspace, which means that we have a user experience very similar to Power BI Desktop, or you have the option of choosing an external separate analysis services instance to act as a workspace. So instead of using the implicit, the, the embedded analysis services, like the one that we used in Power BI Desktop that now will be used by uh, Visual Studio, we could choose to uh, use a specific instance of analysis services. So we could go in control of the workspace database if we want. Let's say that we want to continue with the integrated workspace. And you see that Visual Studio is creating a new project. Now, when I create a project in Visual, in, um, in Visual Studio, what is uh, interesting here, just a moment that we have the project open, you see that the visualization proposed here is that this visualization will have the Tabra Model Explorer with a number of uh, folders here. And I can, uh, import, I can import data from a data source saying, okay, I want to import data from SQL Server. I want to go to my demo machine, my demo instance of SQL Server. And I want to get data from the Contoso Retail DW database. So I'm trying to use exactly the same, uh, the same, let's use this one. 
I'm, 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 I don't want to go in the detail now of these options, but I just want to repeat the same import uh, action that I did in Power BI Desktop. So I wanted to import the sales table, the product table, and the date table. I finish, I complete here, and the data is imported, just like in Power BI Desktop. It's very, very similar, but in a moment, you will see that the development experience you have in Visual Studio shows a preview of each table here. So you can switch between tables. You have data, sorry, date, product, and sales. Uh, but the definition of the model we have now is included in this model.bin file. If you remember, this model.bin file is exactly the definition that contains the definition of the tables and relationships and measures we have. So if I go in view code, just ask me to save this. You see that this is the file we have. So actually the description of the model is a simple text file. And this is the model.bin file that I mentioned before. So here we have the description of what we have in each column, what we have, the data type of each column, the data source, and when we create measure, we, we, we will have also the measures. Now, guess what? If I go to Duck Studio, so let's go to Duck Studio and let's create a connection. You see that Duck Studio is able to connect to Visual Studio. Actually, what is happening? Uh, Duck Studio is connecting to the workspace instance of analysis services used by Visual Studio. So this Tabra Project 2, in reality, is connecting to another instance of analysis services that, in this case, as has only date, product, and sales. We don't have auto date time in using Visual Studio. And guess what? I can use SQL Profiler again. So I can open another instance of SQL Server Profiler. I can choose here, sorry, I have to go here. I can choose in the event selection, the same command events, uh, command N, and we, we, where is progress reports, uh, current end. Here we go, and run because at the end of the day, it's true that we have, so let's see if I can show both windows side by side this way. Let me can restrict this a little bit because I just want to show that something happens here. We need a little bit more space for uh, Visual Studio. And here we go. So clearly, if I modify manually, this model don't be in file. Um, I, I, I don't immediately send this information there. But when I do this edit operation using, and I use double click here, I open the editor in Visual Studio. And the editor in Visual Studio actually manipulates the model dot bin text file, but at the same time keeps a synchronization with the analysis services on the other side. So let's go here to the table date. Uh, something is not working correctly here. So let me try again. It's funny. This is the problem of uh, <laughs> doing the unplugged videos. So you see that I don't see, oh, there was something just in the refresh of the, okay. So for example, here now we have, uh, let's say, I have the diagram view where I can connect the tables with the relationships. So let's create a relationship. Remember, every time I will make a change here, you will see something happen, happening on the other window. So I connect the date column, I create a relationship, and here we go. There is a synchronization between my Visual Studio and Analysis Services. So Analysis Services is always uh, synchronized. And the same happens if I connect product key. And the same happens if I go back to the data view and I create for example, in the sales table, is the user interface of Visual Studio slightly different. Let's say I want to create here a measure. So I have to use another syntax here. Let's see if I can okay. sales uh, amount is e column equal to some x of sales pointing pointing multiplied by net price. Okay, so I create the measure, and once again, look at what happens here. Every time I synchronize this, 
new commands are happening. Also in Visual Studio, we have even though we have a completely different user interface, the principle is similar. We have um, one user interface with preview of the data. We can modify everything, table, columns, relationships, measures, but everything we do is immediately synchronized with the workspace server. Now, both Power BI and um, Visual Studio cannot work in a disconnected way. So both Power BI and Visual Studio require having a workspace database, an instance of analysis services active and continuously synchronized with the logical definition of the model that you have, because this is the way they work. Now, let's introduce Tabular Editor. When I use Tabular Editor, I have a different user experience. So let's go back to uh, Power BI Desktop. We can use Tabular Editor starting from Power BI Desktop. Because when I do this, actually, I open Tabular Editor and I connect Tabular Editor to the same model, the same analysis services workspace that I'm using in Power BI Desktop. So when I click this button, I have this window open that shows the same tables and measures I define in this model. You see also the same auto date time uh, table that have been created automatically. And I can modify them. But what is the big difference? Now, Tabular Editor does not automatically synchronize itself with the model. What does it mean? Um, let's do this. So let's go here. Okay, so let's go here and let's put side by side the SQL Server Profiler we created at the beginning with um, to communicate with uh, Power BI Desktop. Uh, let me just check because I want to be sure this is the right Power BI, the, the right uh, SQL Server Profiler. So let's just try to, for example, uh, rename this measure. I want to make sure that I'm using the right window. And yes, is this one? Let's, let's check the date and time. So yeah, no, maybe let me try again. So plus zero. Oh yes, yes, it is the right one. Okay, so I'm connected to the right uh, SQL Server profiler. And now I want to do something here. So if what happens if I go here in says and I create a new measure, right? I create a new measure. I call this measure, for example, total cost. And I write here some X of says space quantity multiply by oops, multiply by says uh, uh, unit cost. Okay, so I'm Creating a measure. So remember, we have this is the last line in the SQL Server profiler. Now I go here and I click this check. Okay. Now you see that nothing happened. Nothing happened in SQL Server profiler because uh, so far, Tabula Editor is working just on the model.bin file, on the Tabula object model. It's not even a file, it's just in memory. And Indeed, I see here that this new measure has been created and it is not synchronized yet with analysis services. Let me also rename this to total cost. And let me create another measure. A new measure, let's say margin. The margin is equal to this amount minus total cost. And I click here. Now we have two measures, total cost and margin. But so far, nothing happened here. Only when I decide to say the changes I made to analysis services to the worst database, at that point, something happened. When I click Save here, you see that now something happened here. 
So you have seen that a few lines have, moved, have been moved just when I decided to save this. Now, this is a big change because this means that when you use Tabular Editor, now I'm using Tabular Editor 2, but the same happens if you use Tabular Editor 3, you can work disconnected. You can work on just the metadata and you can decide when to apply the synchronization. Now, it's clear that when you are a beginner, it's better having something that is immediately synchronized. But when you work with a large data model, having the need of synchronizing every single step you do actually is a waste of time. It, it is much better to prepare several changes. This way, because you don't have to wait anything, you can apply many changes together and then commit these changes all at once to the model. This increases the productivity. You don't have to wait. Now, in Tabular Editor 2, you might not see a problem if you create, um, for example, a measure with a, with a syntax error. But Tabular Editor 3 has a complete parser that is able to detect any invalid DEX definition, even though you didn't deploy the changes yet. Tabular Editor, however, allows you to work in, uh, in, in different ways. You could open, for example, the file. So, so far, I used Tabular Editor. Let me go back here. Uh, I, I used Tabular Editor using um, an active workspace, even though I opened the model, but actually I was connected to Analysis Services. But you can open just a text file if you want. For example, if I go here in demo and I go in this Tabular project 2 that I created before in Visual Studio, if you remember, Visual Studio says this file as a text file, is a JSON file. And I can open this file in Tabular Editor and I can edit the Tabular Editor model without having a workspace connected. So at this stage, when I click Save, so if I go here and I create a new measure, and I call this measure, uh, let's call uh, some X, so sorry, I have to write the says point, hitting uh, multiply by says uh, price, okay, just to have a measure here. When I have this measure and I click save, clearly because I'm not connected to analysis services, I just open a text file, save will just save the text file on my, on my hard drive and nothing else, nothing more. Of course, at that point, you still need, uh, probably now this is not working because I have the same file open in Visual Studio, but if I close Visual Studio and I repeat this operation, this should work. And save the file just as a text file. Of course, not synchronized with uh, analysis services. But it's just a choice. Usually, we want to deploy the changes on the production server or on the workspace server, but when we need to do that, right? So let me go back to the whiteboard to recap what we have seen. I can move by. OK, so. What we, had, what we did in Power BI was this architecture. What we did in Visual Studio is something very, very, very similar. Because in Visual Studio, we had Visual Studio. We had a workspace server with analysis services, just like Power BI. We had a model.bin file here that could have been edited with a graphical user interface that shows me not the file in JSON, but with you know a better visualization of the elements of the tables, of the columns, of the content of these columns. But the model.b file is just the metadata, whereas analysis services is the workspace that has the data that we imported from the very same SQL server. So we actually used the same architecture in Visual Studio. With Tabula Editor, or with a notepad. We could just edit the, the file, the model.bin file. So Tabular Editor can work in two different ways. 
it can open a BIM file without having any workspace, without having any um, connected workspace. But Cabra Editor can also connect to an existing instance of analysis services. We used, when we used Tabular Editor connected to Power BI Desktop, we were using this analysis services instance of Power BI. Whereas when we uh, connected Tabular Editor to Visual Studio, we used this other instance of analysis service. But you can also connect Tabular Editor to a specific instance of analysis services if you want, or you can avoid connecting at all. Now, when you connect our editor, in any case, it's up to you to decide when to define the synchronization between our editor and analysis service. So this is a manual synchronization, whereas the synchronization that happens here is always automatic. You have no control. And the same happens here, automatic. And this could make a big change because, uh, of course, when you are uh, when you're moving your first steps in Visual Studio or Power BI, this automatic behavior is what you want. You always want a consistent view. But when you start working on a large model, maybe that you want more options. And one of the options is that I want to apply several changes to the metadata, and I want to propagate these changes to the workspace server only when I'm ready, only when I completed many operations. I don't want to wait those one, two, three seconds every time I rename a measure just because uh, the, the workspace has to be synchronized. So this is just a, a description of why the uh, behavior of Tabular Editor is so different from uh, Power BI and Visual Studio. Uh, actually, I like of Tabular Editor the ability to work in both ways. Sometimes I want to work in a completely disconnected mode, but other times I want to work connected. But when I'm connected, I can choose when to commit my changes to the database that I'm developing. I hope this has been useful and enjoy that. Mm -hmm.